in the first episodes about the restoration of this painting, you did watch me doing several actions in order to preserve it. I did apply a new canvas, I cleaned the painting and removed the old varnish, I applied the filling in a little holes the canvas had, and is about there where this third part starts. You can find the links for the first and second part of this project below in the description of this video. I do will start by removing the excess of putty and I can use the sensitivity of my fingers to feel if I reach the same level between putty and out painted canvas. And for that, I do a slow, light, circular motion. With a swab and some distilled water, I remove the excess of putty that now is in powder. Later in this video, I will apply a varnish on the painting, in order to keep separated my retouching from the real layer of original painting. But because in the last project, I did use the last quantity of varnish I had, I will have to make more. And to make it, I will need two different solvents, a synthetic resin and some UV light blocker so the painting remains protected. I do need to be extremely accurate with the quantities of each ingredient so for that I do need to use graduated lab tools. I start by measuring the solvents and I will need equal parts of each one of them. Solvents that I pour into a jar. Then, I have to weigh the resin. I need to use this fabric called gauze, normally used in medical situations. And here you see me using a wood spoon and that has a reason. I love to take care of works of art and I love to preserve works of art. But there is another amazing and beautiful work of art 
and that is our planet. And our planet needs to be preserved too. We just need to stop for some seconds and make some reflection to come to the conclusion that our planet is so very special. Unfortunately, a lot of us already had some bad experience caused by the climate changes, so there's a lot of things that humans need to reduce. Me personally, there is a long time that I stopped using plastic things if I can have them in a more biological material, like wood for example. Being a restorer and working with several solvents, I also am concerned in having a greener policy. In the way I use them, in the way I dispose them. Although using this wood spoon may look a small action, if we all do small actions, then they become big and greater actions. I use this gauze to make a small bag that holds the resin and I will tie a little string because I'm going to need to hang this little bag. It is time now to add the quantity of drops I need of UV light blocker. Now I can put the bag with the resin inside the jar that contains the solvents. And I will hang it till a certain point that the bag with the resin doesn't touch the bottom of the jar. This way the force of gravity will pull the resin into the solvent. And I will leave it like this for several hours. After several hours are passed, I can notice that the resin that was in the bag is now totally dissolved in the solvents. So now it is okay to remove the bag. And voila, the varnish is ready to be used. I will need to stretch the canvas and I will use the original stretching frame. But first, I did clean it because it had accumulated dirt from 300 years and I also will remove this extra layer of some kind of wood laminate that I believe it was glued with some kind of hide glue. So I will need some water and some heat. I will try to melt the glue to be able to take out the laminate.
Well, I think that by now you also agreed that this was not easy at all. Oof, after a long time, the stretching frame is ready. I can now adjust the painting to the stretching frame. I am going to apply the varnish that goes in between the original painting and my retouching. And it is the varnish that you just watched me preparing.
I allow the varnish to dry well and then I can start the retouching of the painting. My optimizers help me to notice several little issues that are not so evident with my naked eyes. And this painting has several. I start the retouching here. I am just giving some dark color to very small little dots that are white and I am going to try to make them look less evident so our eyes do not notice them so well. In the process of retouching, I normally work with more transparent colors. So that means I do apply a first layer of paint, I allow it to dry and then I apply another layer. And this continues with several layers applied until I reach a color that I think is the correct one.
with the retouching finished, I can advance to the application of the final varnish. This final varnish is a different resin than the other one I applied in the layer in between. And to you that are still watching this video till now, it is clear that you enjoy this kind of videos. I would like to say that several of my projects do have several parts, but in the near future, I will for each one of those projects, make a video with the summary of the several parts, so you can watch in one video the whole process of conservation and restoration of that project. In the beginning, this painting was in a need of attention. It is a beautiful painting, but was hided behind a lot of bad issues. After several actions of conservation and restoration, this painting can shine again. The inspiration that did inspire the artist to create this painting is now so much more clear. This painting is full of beautiful details, and now I let you enjoy them. I hope you did enjoy the process of restoration of this painting of Jesus praying in the Garden of Olives. If you would like to watch the first part of this project, click in this video. To watch another video, then click here. Thank you very much for watching and I meet you on the next video.